Fishman and I'm here for another segment for Canine Chronicle and today we are going to make a charcuterie board. Now where this originally came from charcuterie was in France they used it for the French dried meat markets to it was the word for displaying their meats but now it has evolved totally into um, an entertainment appetizer that you can kind of make it what you want to make it and so it can be your own. What I love about a charcuterie board is that you can really play with different flavor profiles with adding fresh fruit and dried fruit, herbs and jams, nuts, olives, different crackers. This is even a vegetable, a tikma, and then different cheeses. And this gives you a pop of color because we arrange them all together. And also, if you want to separate meats, you can separate meats because, you know, if you have somebody that's a vegetarian and doesn't want them on the plate, you could do a separate board for that. So it showcases meats and cheeses all with different colors. And so now I'll show you how to arrange a board. So the charcuterie board, first of all, it's normally a wooden board. So you would take something, for instance, this board, this is typical. Typical charcuterie board, nice wooden, a lot of space. But you can also use something like this, which is a little bit lighter, a little fancier, a little smaller, if you wanna do something like that for a small party entertainment. But today, we are going to use this one. I love this board, it's nice and big. It actually even spins. So if you have a large group of people, you can put it all on here and then you can spin it around so that everybody can see what we have to offer. Now, first we're gonna start with our statement pieces. So I have these different bowls that I got from Home Goods. These are the round ones and I actually have this too, which is I got from Valentine's Day, but I still use them throughout the year, but they're nice color and I like the interest that it provides. So I'm gonna put these statement pieces on here. I have green olives, nice big ones that I also use in my martinis and Kalamata olives and these little pretzels and some cashews and here's some macadamia nuts. So I'm gonna put those on here. Then I'm going to add some of these nice big slices of cheese. This one is blue cheese, this one is um, smoked Gouda, this is Buda Kesa, and then also I am going to add this brie right here, and I have one more piece I want to get into here, because I want to do a little something special with this, because it's one of my favorites. So this is just a slice of cream cheese. So what I'm going to do from there, I have these nice arrangement here, so I need to get this filled in and build it. It's like building a house. So I'm going to start to add some different crackers. So these are just some rosemary crackers that I have. And I think I'm going to just start to like build this around the bottom here. Maybe I'll move this up a little bit and then build this in here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to think of them as like little cities and you are building the flavor around that little city. And these are just Ritz crackers. I'm gonna put the Ritz crackers right here around the Gouda. Put some in here. Because then people, when they see the Gouda and they wanna have something <clears throat> with it, they'll use that Ritz cracker. Then right here, this is my little addition that I love. With my cream cheese, I love to use this olive tamponade. And I'm gonna put that right on top of the cream cheese because it's one of my favorites to use this olive tamponade with these mini toasts that I have. And then you just do the mini toast with a little bit of cream cheese and then the olives on the top. It's really a great flavor and it makes its own little appetizer. So I'm gonna put that in here, make that look pretty. And then the blue cheese, what's good with blue cheese? Apples. Apples are great with blue cheese. So I'm gonna arrange the apples in here. Make it out its own little town. Here we go. I'm gonna try to cover as much of the plate as I can. 
here we go. And then build it up too, you know, make it nice and uh, full looking. So then here we have these olives. I think I'm gonna put some grapes here. Just keep the fresh fruit going, nice and full. I'm gonna add some grapes over here. Fill it in, looks good. Right here, I'm gonna move this in a little bit and put some fresh strawberries. This is gonna look really great. Try to keep that in the center. Now, when your friends come over, this will be really fantastic because of the fact that, let's just say that it's a hot day and you're at a dog show and you don't want to start your oven, but yet maybe some friends are gonna come over and they're going to you know, some, spend some time with you, hopefully when all this COVID stuff is over. And so this is really a nice way to have something ready to go that you don't have to cook. You come back from the show, you're done, you're ready. Now here, I'm going to take this. Actually, this is what's great about being able to build your own house. <laughs> I am going to add this meat and this is just salami. I'm gonna add some salami in here. Just fold it, make it look like little rosettes. I think I just lost a strawberry down there. Just make this look right in here. Another nice addition. Nice and full. Excellent. Oops. There's a cracker to go with the strawberry. Perfect. Now these are beautiful. These, if you have not had these oat cakes, these oat cakes are fantastic. So they're a little bit sweet. They taste almost like a cookie. So it's perfect over here with the brie. So I'm gonna put this over here. Now, if you wanna take a schmear and put it on top of that brie, it would be great. So you could take some apricot jam or some hot pepper jelly and just schmear it on top of that brie serve it with these oat crackers, it will be spectacular. And it gives a little bit of sweet to the tray. So that's really nice too. Now right in here, we have some more grapes that we can fill that in with. Look how pretty this is looking with all of these different textures, all of these different colors. Your friends are gonna be so happy with this. It looks beautiful. We can add actually some more nuts into here. We're gonna take this. We're gonna fold up these crackers right here. And with this butter cheese, we're going to add some walnuts because walnuts are great. Right in here with this cheese. Nice to snack on. Now, to fill everything in at the end, I mean, look how beautiful it is already. This white looks a little bit plain, so what I'm going to do is take a little bit of paprika, just to make it, give it some color, put some paprika on the top of there. Looks beautiful. And then, to finish it off, I'm going to add some sprigs of rosemary in here makes it look beautiful. Add it in, looks very pretty. And one other thing, of course we would have some like cheese knives we can stick in here to use. Oops, this is for the olive tapenade, put it right there. And then you can also at the end, you can add these little signs so that people will know what the cheese is. So you can put this like right here, like where the cheese is, although that's not the smoke good. We'll put it right here. Smoke Gouda, the brie, put it here. The blue cheese, of course, people know probably which one is the blue cheese, but you can add that on. But look how nice that is. And this will feed like a nice group, either make it for dinner or it'll make the, the appetizer. Thank you for watching, and I hope this is helpful to you. Tune in for more videos from Canine Chronicle.